there's no reset to the last save. There's no save at all. You go, and it's like the Oregon Trail. You just keep going, <laughs> keep going, and then people die of dysentery, and that's it. And then they're gone, and then you die. So FTL has that kind of attitude towards the game. You can't save anything. You just go with it. And it's also, what Mark was saying, procedurally generated. This is a game that has an objective, a theme, a genre, and stuff, but it's different for every single person that plays it. It's not the same exact experience because it automatically generates the things that are going to happen, automatically comes up with it. So both of those things together are what make a roguelike game. It is a game like NetHack or Rogue. It used to be played just in the terminal. You are a letter, and you wander around the screen, and you pick up a dog, and he wanders around with you, and you fight little monsters just in this little terminal with ASCII characters. But every time you played it, it was a completely different dungeon that you were wandering around. And whenever you died, you had a little gravestone marker put there, and all your resources disappeared. So that's people pick that up and put that in larger contexts now. That's what's called a roguelike game. Okay, resources, crew uh, members. Lots of different resources, yeah, crew members. Things relating to your power or energy or the, where you allot your, your resources from the engines. Yes. What are some procedures? No real uh, consensus there either. There's lots of procedures. Um, lots of things to do in this game. Yeah, this is not like Euphoria where you say, boom. It's like, there's 17 things that you can do, and there's all these different resources and things you can upgrade, and rules. You can only do this, you can only do that, and move that around. What do people want to do? Um, common answers were implement the strategy, um, and uh, procedurally generated aspects. We want to learn about some procedurally generated content? I think we can do that in this class. That's part of my goal, is to make sure we talk about that. Random event generators, procedurally generated. Uh, yes. Character pathing. Does anybody want to volunteer that they said that and what they meant by that? Yes, what did you mean by that? I mean, it's just like uh, whenever you have characters going through different ways, you just find like, the best route to get everything. Yes. I mean, if you're in the command center and you need to go fix the engine, you just say, hey, character, go to the engine, and the game took care of that for you. And you got to make sure that it doesn't, like, stupidly go through, like, a no-air room. Right. So it doesn't like, burn itself to death. Fire. Yes. <laughs> so we'll, we'll learn about that in this class, about simple ways where you just say, here's where you're supposed to go, but then obstacle avoidances, and then what if the path changes along the way? Dynamic path generation is going to be important for us for making all these little non-player characters that we want to happen in the background that make these games interesting that's part of what we're going to learn in this class okay cool hopefully this is this is good for you just to get a picture of these games and sort of get a preview of where we're going to go we can't do everything that you mentioned but we will highlight some of the pieces and get you ready okay who is doing limbo you too yes talk about limbo to us uh, the objective was kind of weird. Um, a lot of people were like, don't freak out. Don't, don't die. Go, go right. Go right. Go right. Go right. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the, theme, the, theme, yeah. the theme was kind of similar. There was a lot of like dark horror kind of stuff. Like the said. consensus is horror, but I don't... But some people are like yeah. strange, Lord of the Flies world, or other things like that. Survival. Yeah. yeah. Post apocalypse. I like that one. I don't think that's true. Kids eating but, kids. <laughs> yes. Kids hunting kids for food. <laughs> but yeah, it's a just a side scrolling puzzle platformer. Yes, it's a platformer. <laughs> this should tell you what a platformer is. You are somebody walking around, it's Mario, essentially, with a lot more horror and puzzles built into it. The popular resources were uh, time, sanity, and bear traps. Yes. <laughs> and boxes. And boxes. And boxes. And there is a... There is, what, a fly? It's like, yeah, I don't know if you played it that long, but there's fly. Fireflies. Yes, fireflies. The brain slugs. There is the, the spider. Spider freaked me out. <laughs> For a long time. It took me like 10 minutes to adjust to the first spider. I was like, okay. 
Yeah. Then There's then more then. spiders? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. And the so. main procedure was just pushing things and interacting with it with your little key. So you could do a number of things by doing that, like pushing the boxes or pulling things or... Yes. Procedures. The things you do and then the rules... Are you what, gonna die? You're gonna die. Yes. <laughs> Pretty much. These are the ways that you will die in this game. I think I saw a video of like a hundred ways to die in limbo. <laughs> yeah, and it, they are very, very gruesome. So, so watch out. I've ever won is for that. Into a bear trap, and your head just like pops off, rolls along the ground a little bit. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, what do people want to know to do about this game? A lot of people wanted to learn how to make good puzzles. Okay. Puzzle design. We'll touch on that somewhat. We're more of an implementation kind of thing. But we do want to think about, we don't want to just make games, we want to make good games. Uh, narrative gameplay. Narrative yes. gameplay. What does that mean? Uh, because there's no actual, there's no words in the bow. There's no literal narrative. So they have to tell the story with just the gameplay. And they... <laughs> so, so what was the narrative? What were they telling you? Um, it's not. I suppose it's one of those games that would be clearer the longer you play it because there aren't any walls of text. But it's because, like, further on, after you deal with the spider a little bit, you discover that there are like kids in the woods with you that have like set up these fortresses and. There are dead kids hanging places. I don't yes. know. It's a thing. There are things in the world that are facts and tell you things about the game. Right. Yeah. And and even the game itself, when they when they published it, they're like, we're just gonna make one sentence to tell you to play this game. Maybe you might go be finding your sister. <laughs> That's it. Go play this game. <laughs> and so they the, but it's a successful game. People like playing this game and solving these puzzles, working it through. So, people want to know how to program gritty dark tones and make cool puzzles. Okay, we'll think about that. I like designing games and thinking about puzzles. We need to think about what makes a good game, what makes a good puzzle. How do we make our games compelling? We'll try to think about that a bit. Okay, what else? Any other thoughts on Limbo? Nice sound effects. Yes. Yeah, and you're right. When when you die, when you die, the graphics, you're not just this simple little character being animated, but it falls into pieces and your arms come off and stuff. How do you do that in a game? How do you make that kind of dynamic animation system happen with this little puppet character? Essentially that's what you're doing. Stop animation stop animation movies. What is going on in there? You can program that kind of stuff in different ways. Okay. Would you recommend we play Limbo, like if I teach this course again, that people play Limbo. Yep. Yes. Okay. Cool. Lollipop 3. Lollipop 3. Lollipop 3 is the title of two different mobile games. Oh, yes. Yes, yeah. it is. I discovered that after I looked at these results, and I was like, oh, no. I think one is called Lollipops 3. Yeah. Yes. And one is called Lollipop 3. Yes. Oh. Unfortunately, some people played Lollipops 3, which looks like a horrible, boring game. <laughs> yeah. it's, a, it's one of those, like, match three. Yes. Oh, yeah. three. Yes. Oh. And I'm sorry that you played that. <laughs> you should download Lollipop 3 and see how that goes. So what was the objective of Lollipop 3? So you want to save all the eggs. Eggs. Eggs are falling from the sky, and you have to save them. Yes. What, what is the theme? <laughs> eggs. 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 Right. Animated, trippy, cartoon, fantasy. There, there's a little video you watched at the beginning about the meaty men. Or maybe you didn't. But yeah, it is it is a crazy game just to just to make a crazy game. The genre. Uh, dexterity. You are trying to move your fingers as much as possible on the phone, things you might not have expected to do on your phone. And point and click, dragging things, survival, puzzles. There are puzzles that you have to figure out slightly different ways, but how do you put these combos together? How do you solve these different achievements 
by dragging down this capsule, putting all that together. Yes? Did anybody play it on their phones? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The trick is to stack the eggs on top of each other. Yeah. yeah, you can yes. like, like build pyramids of eggs. And you yeah. can, you can, the base falls, you just you can get the basket the, capsules, yeah. and you can capture the eggs. Of course, if you want lots of eggs, you touch the thundercloud and make things happen. <laughs> yes. So, other things. Procedures. Rules. This game is just crazy. <laughs> yes. And what do people want to learn? <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> I was, I was I just my eye was drawn to uh, row 102, column G. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's not good. <laughs> okay. What else? What do we want to? What do we want to learn from this game? Multi touch. Multi touch. How to put a game onto an app. This is a game that was made in Unity, the main tool that we're going to be using. I watched this be developed. This was made by Moonbot Studios. I was able to spend a summer with them working on some other tasks, but at the same time, they were creating Lollipop 3 and making this game. So that's one of the reasons I wanted you to play it, because I know more about how this game was made than any of the other games. And it was a game made in Unity, the tool we're going to use in this class. And I helped with the debugging testing process of it with some other students where I used to teach. So, so hopefully you found that one interesting. And it's a crazy, trippy game. Just, just out there. Other thoughts? Would you want to tell other people to play Lollipop 3? Not the three in a row fruit one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. And hopefully I will be able to get in touch with some of them to have them talk with you about the game production process. They make other interactive experiences, things for iPads, interactive storybooks, other games, using Unity tools. So hopefully later on in the semester, you might be able to have a conversation with them about, here's what I'm learning, here's what we did, how did you get that to work in Lollipop 3? What's going on with that? What are the meanie men? So, okay, who's looking at Plague? So you two, Plague Inc. Tell us what happened in Plague Inc. You kill everyone. Kill everyone. The entire world. Kill all the humans, yes. You're taking up Bender's motto. Kill all the humans. It was a very consistent answer. From all of it. Yeah. What is the theme? Everything's along the lines of like apocalyptic or, or in progress necessarily the apocalypse. Okay. Creating the apocalypse. Yes. Epidemic plagues, survival. What is the genre? Okay, you're not sending out troops, you're not making other things happen, but you are making decisions right. in the background. Yes, it's more, in my mind, of a simulation. A lot of things just happen automatically and you're tweaking and playing with it. It is more of a teaching game. You can play it and try to win the game, but it's trying to teach you about epidemics. What goes on inside them, how things are working, where not all epidemics work everywhere. You pick that up as you play the game. That's something else to think about. Games can be used as teaching elements so that people can learn something as they play it. Never put it in Canada or New Zealand. Never, never do what? Never put it in Canada or New Zealand because their medical research is just off the charts. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and their, their distribution, a lot of people don't go to New Zealand. So, other things. Resources? DNA points. Yep, check. What else? Procedures and rules. You can evolve your virus using the DNA you collect. Uh, you can collect DNA, or you can just pass it to the right Okay. Yes, you can tap bubbles. It's not a really interactive game. You just tap bubbles, and you tap some more bubbles, <laughs> and that's it. And then you go pick a path to create inside your DNA charts, but yeah, you just tap bubbles. But it gives you a good, nice, passive task to do while you watch paint dry and your virus <laughs> kill the entire world. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Games can be used in casual circumstances, yes. Like Lollipop 3, it's interactive. You can't just play that in the background. You have to put all your fingers on the screen. This one, you could be doing something else 
having a very boring conversation and just tapping your phone. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. What do we want to learn?